Right. Start to be good, this. All right. <laughs> Hello everybody, <laughs> this is Richie. I've got Howard from Partila and Magnapina. How are you, man? How are we doing? And our guest tonight is Johan from Tears of the Horda. Good, 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 good. I've been practicing. Tears of the Horda. Now, better than, yeah, better than Howard ever did. Now, first of all, let's give a major <laughs> round of applause for Johan's uh, choice of uh, merch that he's wearing tonight. <laughs> Legend, brilliant. We we played with them in in Galway, um, and 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 Howard had been plugging them for years now. Of uh, like like these guys are fourteen, fifteen years old, and <laughs> what hit you? Um, and and we didn't like literally we didn't we 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 played the very first show where they were all legally allowed to drink, <laughs> and so they did. Uh, no, but it was, I mean, uh, we were supposed to be on tour with them a couple of weeks from now. That's we, at, 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 I think oh, really? where we started planning a tour through Europe with them, uh, which, yeah, mm. got cancelled logically, I would argue. But all of us were really not just impressed with the music and, and the show, but also we, we fed off each other. Like, like they, they, mm. they throw themselves at it. Like, and we're like, this, this is what we did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. But Yeah. So yeah, I remember the first time seeing those guys, yeah. and like, there was a there was a group of us who would be from the older school at the side of things, and uh, <laughs> five of us together at the back of the room after the show, just looking at each other, going like, "Yeah, I fucking quit. <laughs> 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 fuck, fuck this. <laughs> no so way you can keep up with this." Like, no, but that's it. Like, I, I've been playing bass for I'd, I'd say twenty five, almost thirty years now, and you see them, and like, uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> you know, I strum a bit, um, yeah. <laughs> So sick. get this, Johan, right? So I'm doing a bit of research on you, okay? And um, I'm on YouTube and I'm watching yeah. Black Metal and Brews with Ben. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Ben is good, good doing. Yeah, it's freaking yeah. really, really cool, actually. So shout out mm -hmm. to Ben if he's... I mean, he oh, might definitely. get to some, some stage anyway. But um, Ben asked Yella about what brings ye together as a band beyond kind of playing instruments and next minute yellow's going well you know we could have flown to this gig and i'm just like ben and the black metal Bruise is an american podcast just in case people yeah. didn't know so i'm just watching it kind of going yeah we're checking out yeah i wonder where this is going so so yellow's kind of going yeah and uh we went to cork and i'm like did he fucking say cork <laughs> I guess, yeah, so we got in a van and we drove across two seas. I'm not sure about the two seas, but anyway. <laughs> so so um, we land in Cork and we get through it the whole lot. And then you're going, oh, oh, and this band, God Alone. And Ben is going, God Alone, what a band. And I'm going, what? <laughs> this is an American fucking podcast and you're on about God Alone from Cork? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they fucking deserve it. Man, yeah. that was so yeah. cool. That was so cool. It's one just of the most me. exciting things to happen around these parts in so long. It really is. It's just like Howard, as I said, I'm watching it. Adrenaline, you know? I'm watching it in work, and it's an American podcast, and the two boys, <laughs> Ben and Johan, are going nuts over God alone from Carl. <laughs> so that was so cool, man. I must tell yeah, them, actually. I'm not sure if they've, they've, they've seen that podcast. I must, I must send it to them. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, Jesus it, Christ. It was really... Because we, we were lucky that um, the very first tour we did, like the proper first tour, was, was Ireland as well. Because mm. um, that was when we, we played with... Okay, so, so we, we're allowed mispronunciations of each other's names. But <laughs> 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 no, but, but Decky of... Uh, Sir, uh, Sir Gera. Yeah. Ah, close enough. No, yeah, but he, he did these... Uh, he booked these... Um, he, he helped book this tour with us, uh, for us, I should say, and we played with them. And it was like from the get go, we would never, we'd never been there before. We knew hardly anyone there. Um, from from second number one, it was just like, we want to live here forever. <laughs> Not just because of the, the like the because the sound, the surroundings, the, the the land itself is gorgeous and the people are amazing, but there are so many good bands and no one knows about them. Yeah. <laughs> that was really frustrating at times as well. That you went, oh, on pain of death. God, man. Mm. Then, like, all of the doomsters in the Netherlands would go, no, no, no clue, no. Do you know my yep. dying bride? Yeah. Fuck off! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against my dying bride, per se, but, like, it's... But somehow, there was... The, 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 the two seas that needed to be crossed seemed to be mm. 
difficult the one way around whilst going to Ireland and asking a couple of people, hey, can you put us up for a show? Yeah. Done. Bang. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Great community. Mm. How oh, did God, you yeah. two meet? I first met Johan uh, on that tour, actually. Uh, okay. You were pulled up outside the quad. The quad. You remember the quad, um, Richie? Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's that long ago. And um, <laughs> yeah, I remember we were walking up towards myself and Alan were walking towards the, <laughs> the pub. And we were just watching these lads unfurl out of a van. <laughs> <laughs> Just for context, I don't think there's a man under six foot two in the band, you know. No. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was just such an alien thing to come across and then to realise it was a, do, a, a great band. junior A football team, Howard. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, full it forward, was pre, you know, full back. <laughs> it was pre, like, like dad bod and pre-corona bellies. So it's like... Yeah, yeah, this is like 2008 lanky, or something. Lanky yeah. bastards everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, we just started chatting yeah. before the show and... You know, uh, the show was amazing. It was mm -hmm. a fantastic gig. And uh, yeah. we just, you know, we just chatted about a few things afterwards and went Who to was on the bill, Howard? Yourself? It was Siri. No, we weren't on the okay. bill at all. We, we were just long for the, for the show. Right. And there was three bands, I think. Siri Gira. Uh, Council yourself. of Tennis? Council of Tennis, yes. Yeah. Yes, a doom, a doom band, yeah. yeah. It was a pretty decent gig. It was well, there was a good crowd yeah. of it. But um, it was only afterwards, I suppose, I, I retouched uh, bass with, with Johan. And a couple of times, and uh, the second tour you guys came on. I mean, that, yeah, I think that's where we 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 kind of uh, fell on even playing fields, kind of thing. It was fantastic. The tour you did was that not prior to us touring for a second time? When we came over to yeah, yeah actually, yeah, actually, yeah, yes, we yeah, stayed in the apartment. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, I knew it. Yeah, because no, I was I was talking to Lydia about this as well. Like, how long have I known? How it was like, it was like well, forever. people stay that night, I think. It was just, yeah. yeah. But you all did the dishes, so all fine. We all did the dishes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all no one was there. So <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, it, it's, it, that was such a crazy tour. And uh, mm. the, the night before we went to Utrecht, which was an eight hour drive from where we were, it was down on the. Um, was this the now West with Border Five Will Die, yeah? It was with Five Will Die, yeah. yeah. We were okay. touring with Wizard's Beard from, from Leeds. <laughs> Right. And now uh, we're doing a few shows. And one of the shows was in Aku ACU in uh, Utrecht, where Johan is from. Yep. Mm -hmm. Johan had hooked us up with the show. Right. And uh, after the previous gig <laughs> down in Germany, uh, there was, there was a, a, I guess he was homeless. He was just a guy in the street. And uh, we met him after the show and uh, invited him back to the van for a drinking party, you know. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that sound that sound is is every single five will die story yeah, it's, just, it's, just, like, it's uh. just the way it goes like but um, anyway long story short uh, i think he slipped as a mickey <laughs> because uh, i woke up in utrecht <laughs> uh, I, t I was telling andy to turn off the light and he was like that's not the light hour that's the sun it's daytime like you know <laughs> You know, I went, went to play the show and started to kind of come around again. And Yo Johan was like, where are you guys staying? And we were like, fuck knows. Yeah. And he was like, how many of you are there? And we were like, well, there's 14 of us all together. Cause we, had, we had two bands and a couple of lads in tow. And he was like, yeah, plenty of space. Oh, you're brand. We, you you're brand. Legend, you're Irish. Johan. You guys are English. Yeah, come on. It's fine. Fuck. <laughs> uh, we, all, we all piled in on top of Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think we were living together then for three months or so. And yeah, like, oh, you were only recently there. Yeah. So these are my friends. <laughs> this is Lanky Guy. This is Redhead. This is <laughs> this is Barry. And oh, well, <laughs> it was so good. I mean, the thing was really the, the morning after when when everyone was awake and kind of okayish, where yeah, people were doing the dishes. People were bawling over our cat and stuff like that. <laughs> they, are, they, they are really decent lads, actually. Like, oh yeah, they're they're excellent. Jesus yeah, it was Christ. one of the nicest tours I've ever been on in terms of the personnel we were with and so on. We had such good fun. Like, it was but that so wasn't the tour with, that you ended up in Poland as well. Was that the same tour? No, that was that was a previous one. Uh, okay. It was further back. That was about 2008. You know, this was far, far less stressful, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was no fucking green room incident with the neo-Nazis at this one. It was, it was actually the complete opposite. <laughs> that Barry was visible almost 90% of the time. No worries. <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking hell, lads! <laughs> but yeah, it was great times. But but um, following yeah. that, uh, you guys came yeah. over for a few shows here. Yeah, and yeah. I remember you stayed in my you stayed in my place here in Passage. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we had a couple of late nights. It was it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And then yeah. was the last time you were over them was for Monolith then, Johan? Correct? Yeah, yeah, that was the last time. Yeah. yeah. How'd you find so that? We show in Dublin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we played. Yeah, we played show. We played show in Dublin as well. But um, the the um, no the, the, <laughs> the thing is because I was I was seriously considering like how am I going to take if someone asks what am I going to say? <laughs> it's it, and that's what I would argue with any like major city, any any capital city, good people, but mm. like yeah. always a couple yeah. of good people. But the so the thing is that what they showed themselves. The guys helping us out, everyone was gorgeous. It was amazing. Uh, but the show itself was shit. As in, mm. not a lot of people there. Um, the, the, they, they pulled out the plug uh, halfway through our second song. What? Mm. Think, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a feature, Richie. It's a real problem. I mean, it's not uncommon to, to be in Dublin playing a gig. And what was supposed to happen doesn't happen. It's yeah. a real shame. And a lot of good people have tried to do a lot of good things up there. And it's just... It's just it's just ridiculous. It really is. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to, to get past a lot of stuff up there. But, but that was and it. it for, yeah. And it's unfortunate because what ends up happening with myself is when bands do come to want to play in Ireland and do a few, few gigs and are asking who to get in touch with, every time I say, look, if I was you, I'd leave Dublin out of it. Yeah. Wow. You know. The very first show we played was in, uh, in, in, was in Dublin cause, uh, that, that, during that first tour and we played yeah. in... Also something like the Quayside or something like that in, in Dublin. It was um, uh, first floor in a, uh, a pub. And what we give us the pint. The pint, that was it, the pint. Yeah, yeah and there was a guy that came up to us. He's like, sorry, but Steve, who was booking the show, isn't here because bands, I, I lost the name, are playing their farewell show in a squatted uh, villa somewhere down the line. So everyone's there. So there will be no one here. And I don't know where you... <laughs> Yeah. But hi guys, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know. And the show itself was amazing. We played with amazing bands, great people. Mm. There. And in the end, Steve, that, that was for me still the best thing. Steve was like, "Hey, so because he, he he popped up slightly later on, like, okay, I can take you to that party now if you'd like." And it was I think yeah. two o'clock at night, and we're like, "Fuck yeah, tour life!" And it was amazing, and everyone was drunk, and there was a bathtub full of beer and naked crusts in the in the swimming pool, <laughs> as you want. And then at four o'clock, it's because we were like, oh yeah, tomorrow we're playing in Cork, right? Yeah, oh, oh damn, yeah. So we should go home. And he, he dropped us off at home and then walked back to the party, apparently, gave us the key. <laughs> Good luck, guys. And we were just sitting there going, oh yeah, okay, yeah. And that, but that happened like three times during that tour that someone would say, oh, okay, you can stay over here. Um, here's the key. Okay, how are you going to get in? Oh, I'll not, I'll not, I, when I'll be back, you just... <laughs> no, but that was magical. <laughs> Wow, dude. Okay, excellent. It happened in Cork. Um, <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. Uh, that's, yeah. that's it. Like the, the the first time I took the I could go over with with Lydia was uh, we 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 spent or me a couple of days in Cork because I was like, yep, you need to see the city. You need to meet the people. Full stop. That's it. Like like mm. this this is amazing. And she fell in love as well, logically. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that, yeah. that, that's it, really. Yeah, no, and, and we, uh, we've seen each other at a couple of road burns as well, of course. But a couple of road burns, and yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but it, it was really the, the first. The first click was a good one, and then it, it, it only got better afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think the Dublin scene is a case of um, too many cooks? I, I don't not... think so, Richie. I, I mean, there's like I said, there's so many good people up there trying to do good things and there's others who are doing it so long they just know how to deal with it all. Mm. But what generally seems to happen, particularly with this type of music, with the likes of Heart Alone, Thursday the Horde, anything of that ilk, okay. what tends to kind of happen is the venue doesn't want you there, the staff don't want to deal with you or the people that come to see you and the promoters running around trying to put out fires everywhere. Yeah. You know, it, it comes down to simple things like getting your gear out you know, the amount of times I've been told, no, you can't do it. You can't get your gear out. It's too late. And it's 11 o'clock, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it's really where, frustrating. Where can I park my car? Where can I park car? Nowhere. Your car? <laughs> <laughs> no, to but be fair, the, car, side, Cork suffers from that as well. <laughs> yeah. no, but on no, the, on the flip still. side, um, with Dublin, uh, it, it, with the Magna Pina, it's the complete opposite. It's just mm. the weirdest fucking thing. So it, to me, it really does seem to be down to the type of music that is happening, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Because it's been completely the opposite experience with Magdapina, and it's sad because it doesn't need to be, you know? Mm. But, 
But I would argue what you said just now that it's also down to the venues that that I think yeah. is lucky that over the years ago there have been venues there that have been supporting of of this scene of of our scenes. Yeah, Dublin. I, I would, I, as I said, I would argue the same happens in Amsterdam. You've got loads of tiny venues for tiny scenes, mm. and it's difficult to find the one that has the correct click. And and so you take what you can. Oftentimes it is a, a band drop and say, okay, we need a show who within the next couple of weeks can arrange something because that happened for us as well, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it, it happens. And it's, it's, again, no no hard feelings at all against the, uh, the, the people uh, organizing there because they, they did the best they could. Exactly. With- and that's what's so frustrating about it, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it goes. So, good night anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dig into Dublin anyway. Happy days. We move on. (laughs) How did you start? (laughs) Yeah. How did you start, Joe? And how did Tears of the Horda start? Good. Um, Well, it was a long, cold winter. um, (laughs) The the, the very, very start of the man, it's almost 15 years ago, give or take, because we'd be hanging around in in the Utrecht Underground for a while. And Joost, our, our singer, um, he was in, in a, a bit of a tough guy metalcore band, even though he won't say it is what it is. Uh, and I was <laughs> oh, in a, I in a, see that. Oh, man, it was, hor- <laughs> it was horrible. It, in the best way possible, but horrible. No, yeah. I was in a, like, Amon Ra styled post-hardcore metalcore band. Um, and then suddenly he had, on a, one of the, um, the, the message boards, then, he, he had a, uh, a post saying, okay, we want to, f- we want to play very... Uh, very heavy, short songs, which are fast and horrible. Who, you know, who can join us? I was like, I think I need this. So that's how we started off, literally as a band covering a Negative Approach and uh, Extreme Noise Terror. Okay, mm. Extreme Noise Terror, cool. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Uh, and we were called Liar, Liar, Cross on Fire. Cross on Fire. <laughs> which was <laughs> very subtle. Right yeah, no. No, but the, the thing is, that at that time it was good, but then uh, we, we switched drummers and then we got a new guitar player and then suddenly... Because that was Stefan, who, who you also remember, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'm uh, still in touch with today, yeah. Yeah, and he was, he's, I mean, he's still a good, very good friend, but he, he was more of a, a noise rock kind of guy. So he brought mm. waves of sound rather than riffs. So I could do riffs with my bass whilst he was, he was doing all the, the, the groundwork. And, and what was the scene like then, Johan? Um, was there a lot oh. of uh, English bands coming through? Or had you American bands, or was oh. it just did you have to travel to to see these bands coming through? It was. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah. You, we know as old people, like it used to be amazing. You no, know, we we had the thing. The thing was back then we had amazing scenes. But I have to admit that when we first got started, like two thousand, yeah, two thousand five, six ish, it, mm. it kind of deteriorating uh, for numbers of reasons. Uh, one of them was that in the Netherlands, more and more venues were getting closed down by local authorities. Mm. Oh, okay. So squats were, were closing down and stuff like that. So that doesn't help, especially not for the weirder kinds of music. Um, and that had a long lasting effect. But, so what you had was a couple of really good venues that booked bigger bands. And then you had to hope as, as a local band to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we were lucky because I think that we, we, were, we, were, we changed name. I think that, yeah, really when we started to, to record the, um, uh, the first EP. They were like, of Raptor. Yeah, Rage Raptor, which was really that, it was a shift of sound. Uh, the, the first demo was Lie Lie, Cross on Fire, was all over the place, which I love. But then it started to solidify, so we needed something else. So it became to Side of Horde. Mm. Uh, um, again, willingly picking that name because it expressed really what we were down with and what we were doing. But uh, we were, I think we were busy for an, a year or so and trying to get shows. It was kind of difficult, as in, you can ask your friends... But if you already ask those friends a year a year back with your other bands, then it becomes a bit of a. Um, and it was really that we we were two we were hardcore kids playing black metal. At least that's how okay. we were back then. So the hardcore kids we were to metal. The metal kids we were to hardcore. And so we were like, okay, fuck it, we'll book shows ourselves then. Um, mm. And we were really lucky with Day Bays or DBs, which is a venue in in Utrecht, mm. with a, an amazing guy doing most of the booking, Jeroen who said, hey, uh, if you want to book shows here, you can. And so we started booking shows there. So we had like like Celeste and uh, what you have, uh, Eagle Twin, uh, uh, the uh, as in everyone we wanted to book, we just sent them a mail saying, hey, 
You know, we can we you can stay at my place because yeah. <laughs> fourteen guys, no worries. No, but that's it. So you can stay at my place. Uh, we'll cook you dinner and we'll get you breakfast. So you know, um, and and see what happens afterwards. Brilliant. Uh, and yeah, and, and the venue was like, okay, we'll pay we'll pay all the bands all the time, um, mm. even if you only have like like twenty paying visitors because it's you, the music is too weird. We'll give <laughs> money anyways because I think we can do this. <laughs> so for a couple of couple of years that was amazing and and I think for the last five years perhaps last last yeah last five six years things have really picked up for metal in the Netherlands anyways yeah seems very like the Cork scene um, back yeah. in back in that time back in two thousand and ten as well like because there's there's always one focal point which was probably mm. the Krushkin Lawn Lawnhard at the time yeah it would have been mm. at the time that was where everything happened really. <laughs> But I, I think uh, there are, there's a lot of similarities in many ways between all the scenes that I know well. Leeds yeah. would be a scene I know well. Utrecht, <laughs> True Johan would know pretty well. And it does seem to be that common denominator of different periods of time where things were kind of the same for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, even though we're off on our own little island over here, <laughs> it's, it's remarkable how similar Isn't it? Yeah. experiences are. It's mad. It really is. It was, I, for us, it was really that we, we, were, uh, we were starting off with our... Our, 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 our type of music and then we discovered Death Heaven so we started mailing with yeah. them and then we discovered Altar of Plagues and we mailed them oh yeah mm. we, we, we kind of look back on that as well going did we copy off each other but it was somehow somewhere in, throughout the entire world everyone was, was throwing in screamo riffs and hardcore breakdowns in black metal riffs mm. going this sounds fucking amazing yeah. so we, we were lucky to be I mean again old people but lucky to be around back then as well um and I do think that, that, I mean, we've been surpassed by, by those bands, no worries whatsoever, because they, they've, they've, they have and have, uh, did have amazing careers. But I was, I was, I'm still proud of being around back then and going, s seeing that happen. Like, yes. Yeah, being, being part of it. Being part no, of it, Seriously, yeah. And yeah. mm -hmm. just going, MySpace, you know, I think that our first <laughs> MySpace as well, Howard. Yeah, that I you, think it you was. Said, you send a message to 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 Ultra Plagues. I I, I just heard a, a fairly crappy uh, rendition via the MySpace player and go. <laughs> yeah, that's different times. Want to want to trade demos? Yeah, sure. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so your that, debut. That was what you did. Your debut EP, then Johan, or album, yeah. I should say. Um, that you, yeah. was a true Burning World Records. You released on the LP side. So, yeah, and self. The, f the full length was uh, was Burning World. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you meet up with them? Were they localized again? Well, oh, they're, they're in Nijmegen. They're in Nijmegen. Okay. Uh, no, okay. that really because um, we are slow, like fucking slow when when writing. But that's really because everyone has their say and everyone has op opinions. But for this, it was it was a process of I'd, I'd argue three four years before we finished the record, and then it was like okay. We are only going to write to a couple of labels and we're, to make sure that we, they do what we, uh, or they represent what we want to do with the band. And with Burning World back then, it was, they had um, Angelic Process and they had Neurosis and they're like bands that went beyond a, a, an easy description. Mm. And I have to admit as well, uh, they, they had worldwide distribution. Uh, so we're like, okay, let, let's write to them and see what happens. And for us, concerning it was the same, as in we, we wrote to them, knowing they had good, good distribution, but also they, they went all out for their bands. Um, and and they, I mean, they, they've had amazing releases from the Belgian scene, from the Antwerp scene, the Ken scene, specifically. Um, and Tartarus, the, the tape label, uh, Richard is an old, old friend, and he's released so many amazing bands as well. So it's really sending mails to a couple of, I think we, we sent mails to five labels at that time going, okay, this is literally, this is mm. what it should be. Mm. And, and, and save, yeah, save two of them. Well, the, the, our first three choices literally said yes. And then we got one reply as well, who said probably next year. So it's like, okay, yeah, I mean, we love you guys. and we will keep you in the loop uh, for what happens after this, which was not a lot to be completely fair. Uh, it's coming now, but, um, and not, yeah, the other label said, "Well, it's too busy. I've got I've got too many things going on right now." Mm -hmm. But that being said, uh, the first three choices, as I said, uh, they were there, and we were surprised essentially because it's like, yeah. "Yes, oh wait, oh okay. Do you want to do you, uh, do you want us to explain what the record is about? No, no, just send just send the rest of the files. 
oh, oh yeah, yeah, fine. Well, it's great, yeah. man. So kind of from your own personal side of things then, finished your studies and where were you at that stage yourself? <laughs> I was an old, old man. <laughs> uh, I keep on saying that. Ah, oh. No, but the thing is that I, I, I've been a teacher for the past 15 years now. Okay. So uh, I, w- I was a working man with a, uh, uh, back then, a pregnant wife and a recently acquired apartment. Uh, no, we, we, we've been talking, we've been talking about that as well. Because when we started, we were all 20-somethings, uh, you know, life. Full of ambition. <laughs> yeah, but that's, oh, they, like, they we can go anywhere, machine. we can do what we want to do. <laughs> and suddenly it's I like, mean, <laughs> yeah. The, no, the, the, the occupations these guys fill in terms of their personal lives is just, it's just insane. It is, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's, 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 it's extremely impressive. It is. <laughs> no, but, but that's it. Like, like we, we want to do things and, and that's what we do. It's like, but yeah. <laughs> it, it's... It became, uh, I mean, re- re- really ran about self. We realized, ah, perhaps not to say we're too late, but if we, if we would have done this like five, six years ago, who knows what could have happened. But on the other mm. hand, uh, our lives are amazing. The music we do, I, we, we still think is amazing. So yeah, so be it. But it was more of a, what I realized really then was we, we, we were touring um, and then we got a, uh, like an offer saying, okay, now come to the uh, come to the yes for a couple of weeks and every every one of us is like yes but and then you <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> job this job you no know, but if i then and perhaps i can tri- yeah so yeah. we we now decided because we we've just uh, joined a new booking agency and i'm really happy about that as well and he's going to try to make sure that we can we can do tours that are manageable for uh, yeah people with at least three jobs each like <laughs> <laughs> So the reason why I'm asking is like, because which one of you is in Oxford? Is one of you teaching in Oxford? Yes. He, he, he just, he, he retired, oh, he's entering. He stopped there two years ago to become a professor in Utrecht and Wageningen. Oh, cool. And, so he's back. Yeah. No, he, and, and he's still, I mean, as far as I, t- I know, he's still, he's still attached to a couple of um, university Departments there, so he teaches there every now and then, and he does some PhDing. Um, but he, uh, yeah, it was really we were talking about that as well. That right about the time that self was released, that he was like, okay, perhaps I should I should try to find a uh, an economic job in the neighborhood so that I can be around more. Because back then it was really going okay. So for the next four months, I'm I'm in Oxford, but I'll be able to practice then and then, you know. So yeah. And, and it, we, I mean, we, we made it work because everyone had, had weird ass jobs and things <laughs> going all going on all over the place. But no, but he was like, he was literally being flown in by, by the prime minister of Laos or, or Vietnam to discuss the, um, uh, the, the, what you call it? The, um, the, the local budgets for crops and stuff like that. And like, uh, agriculture, that's the word I was looking for, sorry. The agricultural crop, uh, agricultural budgets and stuff like that. And then the day after would be back in the Netherlands so he could uh, rehearse with us. <laughs> one, no, one of my, be called my, in Ireland for the milk quarters. <laughs> no, seriously, one, one of my favorite uh, memories is that we played a show with Dragged Into Sunlight in, ha- in Harlem. And it was an amazing show. But he had to catch a flight, uh, again, I think to, to Oxford. Um, hmm. He literally had his, his wheelie suitcase next to the um, next Jesus to the Christ. next to the stage. So he was screaming, and but he had all <laughs> the cab saying, "You wait outside for approximately thirty five minutes, and I'll storm out." And literally, we were just feedbacking. And I turned around, and you see in in, in the back of the venue, you see something <laughs> through the crowd with the, <laughs> with the suitcase, like fuck. But yeah, yeah, that's what we did. That's what we do. I think. <laughs> yeah. And as a band, you will be forever related to the the whole side of the the Hendrik Mars Marsman um, yeah. book that you brought out as well. Yeah. Um, no, of course you've moved on from them, but I mean, it certainly would you agree got a lot of people's attention when you came out with something un- oh, yeah. unique, for, first of all, and then were able to back it up by producing this beautiful book of poetry and going yeah. to probably extreme care to make sure it's translated as well. Oh God, yes. In English. Really, what were you talking about that? 
the first question people asked was always, how do you pronounce the name? But the second one, what does it mean? And so we, we'd always be, yeah, well, you know, describing it. And then um, I think it was seriously during the, the, the time of recording the record that we were like, uh, uh, preparing for recording that we were like, dudes, what we can do now, because it was the 75th, uh, 75th, sorry. Um, anniversary. Anniversary of his death that year. Mm. And we're like, what we could do now is probably like we, we pick our favorite poems, translate them, so everyone will be able to to see and read what, what we where we come from. Mm. Plus, if we then record a song with them or, or do something with them, it's a good little bridge so we can release that around about the June when his uh, anniversary was. And then the record will come out a half a year later or so, but then we have something, you know. Mm. And so we started. We started to uh, translate that, um, and then we got into contact with a, 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 a Dutch literary scientist who, whose life work was translating and, and interpreting Marsman. And we had yeah, but... drinking beers with him, <laughs> <laughs> uh, discussing everything, and so we, and we started to play like literary festivals, which was that's incredible. Yeah, no, it was amazing. So. And it, it, it did, I mean, you're right there that it got us noticed by the, the bigger newspapers, like, as in, mm. this is not just a couple of morons screaming about Satan. Uh, they, they, they've got something else to give as well, uh, which, I mean, it, it's, it's a fairly stupid way of approaching it. But on the other hand, I can see how a, a, a journalist for a, a big local, or sorry, a big national newspaper, uh, if you'd say, so black metal, most of them wouldn't go, oh yeah, well, you know, it all died down after Bathory and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> An hour long debate about a riff, you know. <laughs> so the so book... Dark Throne, pre or... <laughs> yeah. So the book, in case people don't know, is it's a crooked flower in Cosmos. Uh, Flaming mouth. mouth. yes. Flaming. Yeah. And the, it's a collection of 14 poems. Were you aware then of the guy that influenced Marsman, um, Johan, which was George Tracky, the German poet? Uh, are we, are we uh, leaning into the world of fascism now, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the, um... like how, far, how, how much down did you go in relation to the research? Because, I mean, ultimately, you will be getting questions on it. No more we, than we have received some questions on it, and rightfully like so. me saying it to you anyway, but you know, no, we uh, at that point, Tracky, we had no idea of, as in literally none. Uh, however, we did know that, as for instance, a um, an Ezra Pound, uh, Marsman was uh, drawn to the fascism as as Mussolini was was constructing it, mm. uh, which was a, a no. I'm I'm not going to defend Mussolini, of course. The idea was, though, back then we had discussions on that as well, because the, the entire idea of fascism then was to take back money and give it to the people and silly things which are attached and horrible things which are attached. And I can see how an 18, 19-year-old can be drawn to that. We, we, I mean, he was a young guy, in essence, and even though you wouldn't want to be associated with that, it, it is something that happens. And I would argue specifically in, in, in Black Metal, one of the most difficult things is to... Uh, keep on developing in that sense. Uh, I, I have loads of friends who are now in uh, non-political bands or in, in left-wing bands who, when they were 16, 17, had their bourgeois uh, long sleeve. Yeah. You know, it, it's... For me, that's, the sim that's a similar approach, as in you're looking for something that gives meaning to your life. And the bold, strong statements are easier to accept then. Yes, very true. Um... Then so it, that comes. doesn't mean that I say good, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's. Yeah. But that, that was really what what drew what drew us towards Marsman then and still does is, is the the is that anger is that that lust that willing for life that that darkness that that um, uh, knowledge on the approach of death whilst you need to drag life from the mud and get everything from it that there is and it's. I mean, that shaped us as a man anyways. It's, mm. it's later on, as we indeed learn more and more, there's a bit of a, uh, oh, oh, oh no. But it's the same we had for self. We have one song, uh, Gary on, which is um, essentially, it's, it's a nine and a half minutes, pretty much the same riff. And that's really because we want to make it horrible and dragging. 
And that's because it, it's about the self-aggrandizing self or the self, um, well, the self-ignoring self in the sense of uh, you have the, and I lost his name, that's a good sign, I hope at least, the, um, uh, the main responsible for, the main person responsible for Auschwitz who wrote a diary and then said, well, you know, if I wouldn't have done it, someone else would have come along and he would have been far worse. Yes. That, yeah. you know, that kind of, yeah, uh, yeah. kind of thinking just, and it's, but we, I, I, we always have a list of books that we used in the, um, uh, with the, with the record. So we had that as well, his, his diaries. And so we had, we had a, a fair amount of, of people asking us why, and good discussions as well. Mm. Pretty much the same as, I would argue the same as this, that someone would say, but you're still telling people to read it. Um, and then we would say, well, what we're doing is read the lyrics so you can see how we used his words against him. But you could also argue as well that you're converting those ideas to a live audience and you're giving them back passion and energy and feeding off the crowd. Oh, yeah. through the song writing structure of, of it and the music side of things. So that, you know, sometimes it just gets lost because you're able to deliver that raw energy. Oh. So it's the, with, with Mushman, you have that, uh, which is the, I would argue the, the, the uh, conclusion of the song. Um, I acknowledge, but one law to live. Ich yeah. ein mit Leben. And every time we play that, it hurts or it, 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 it fires us up. And last, last Roadburn we played, we, uh, the day before a good friend of ours died and, and we decided to play that song still. And, and I still remember just not being able to see what I was doing, crying and turning around to our drummer who was also crying and just flailing about a bit. And for me, that, that is, in the end, that is what, what I want to take from this particular writer, perhaps even, or, or mm. this particular concept that... You celebrate life. You 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 grab life by the fucking throat and make sure that no one stops you in in, in uh, achieving what you want to achieve in life. And that mm. I, I can see how that can be seen as a negative thing as well. But what I hope is, especially by people talking to us or people seeing us, that they know, oh, mm. they're not that that edgy. Uh, you know, we, we've got our hoodies on and we we don't move. Kind of bad. No, it's it's. We're, we're, I guess a symptom of, a, of an extreme music, music scene as well. I mean, it's the type of music that's been played is so extreme that it, you, you don't, you don't half-ass into these things. You know, you're going to be dealing with extreme emotions one way or the other. Yeah. And yeah. Extreme reactions and extreme passion and extreme exuberance and everything that comes with it. Black metal is just so over-theatrical in that sense anyway. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But um, it's, it's interesting to see, because uh, when I first heard Terge of the Horde, uh, the first thing that struck me was this, this is a second wave black metal band. You know, this is just my reference point for listening to it. Mm. And, uh, but it has banjo in it. <laughs> 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 and, you know, it's just that little fact that just kind of stays with you. It's like, fuck, a banjo in a, in a second wave black metal song. I got to fucking hear this again. <laughs> 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 but just watching... Uh, just getting used to the, the philosophies involved because I've talked to you guys so much about these things myself and uh, it's always interesting to have a discussion with these guys about these things because it's important and it's important to be clear about yeah. things and it's important that, to know that these things are open to interpretation to a certain level but once you're comfortable with yourself and what you're doing you can stand by it and speak up for it you're in a good place you know but, but that's it like we, we we will always be open to discussion we will o always acknowledge this as well and uh, rather than shy away from it or, or post a uh, a caps lock ridden uh you know a facebook st stats update yeah but no no please talk to us come out come to us after a show and, and discuss this i i remember playing in leipzig uh with with my emo band and we were we were told like this is, do not mention uh palestina do, do not mention them because uh, and it was a punk show with punk. So I was like, okay, the punk thing is, for me at least, you talk about things. So I, I, you know, when it's Israel versus Palestine, I go for the Palestinians, but please talk to me to tell me why I should, should perhaps be more open to the Israeli side because I do not know. I need to learn perhaps. And half of the venue walked away. Like, no, but seriously, <laughs> talk to me, you know. Tell me, tell me these fucking things because I, I don't think they will convince me per se. But however... The more I learn or the more I hear or read, the, the more I will develop myself and be able to develop myself. And that's something mm. I think this, this entire band has that we, we are, as I said before, we are opinionated. We, we have our opinions, but they, we, we tend to 
base them on factual evidence. <laughs> like on self, was that kind of more about like kind of breaking free of existing structures? Yeah. And yeah. like yeah. as a teacher then, you know, you, with students, yeah. right? You, you know, you want to teach your students to kind of to be free thinking and not conform. How difficult is it to be in between that as, as a, first of all, as a person and then as you as a musician? Have you been put, questioned on it? Oh God, yes, yeah. and, and luckily so. No, that I, I'm, I'm lucky because because Howard and I talked about this as well. Um, the amount of freedom I have in the Dutch educational system is uh, very Just to be applauded. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never made a, uh, I never made a a, uh, a secret of of who I am, what I think, what I do, what I try to do. Um, and that's what, but that's also something that I say to the classes that I teach. I tend to teach like fifteen to nineteen year olds, so that that makes it a different kind of approach. I think as well, saying okay, I, I have some some. Um, well, I, you know, I, I I have some morals I hold high. I, I have a, a political opinion that I, I hold dear. However, that doesn't mean that you need to follow me, not at all. What I want you to do is be able to follow something for which you can say, but this I will defend with my fucking life. And so we may disagree on certain subjects or certain items, but, you know, be able to defend them. And, and we, ha I mean, I think that's all over the world right nowadays that we, you have this rise in extreme right-wing uh, parties. And one of them uh, in the Netherlands is called the Forum for Democracy. So you know where they stand. Um, <laughs> just a silver-haired um, gentleman. The, oh, just, <laughs> their their um, uh, leader, who is blemish-free, of course, he uh, once said that that the um, all of the teachers in the Netherlands are part of a cultural Marxist system who are trying to indoctrinate all the kids and stuff like that. And I was kind of, and he then said, "Okay, well, I want to, I want all of the students in the Netherlands to call in these teachers to to notify us that these teachers are there and give them our give them uh, give our us their names and addresses." So, uh, and so I told one of my classes, like, "Okay, one thing though, I, I need to mention this now." Has anyone ever felt they couldn't say what they wanted to say because of my personality or my personal leanings? And one student raised his hand and said, I tend not to agree with you, but what you taught me is that I need to have a good reason for not agreeing with you. And I was like, this is what I do. You know, this is fine. I, I, we can still disagree, but if you can say, well, because of reason X, Y, Z, I still think this, then we can agree to disagree and move on. Mm. But yeah. it, uh, the, 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 yeah, no, I, I mean, my boss is probably not, hopefully not seeing this, but I, I tend to be open for discussions in the class anyways, as in that a, te a student says, I know I need to hand this in on date X, but because of reasons, please give me, you know, a couple of, couple of days or give, give me a day extra. And I'm not going to say, no, we made a deal and in life, no. Because if I learned something in life is that when you mail someone or ask someone, oh, dude, it's okay if I send it in a couple of days later. 99 out of 100 times people say oh yeah fine so it's it's really and i'm an english teacher so that that helps as well i i study literature i i watch movies i analyze music we we dive into all kinds of things so um, i think you remember telling me you showed your class um an interview that five and i did back in uh, of course. <laughs> you're, you're not serious <laughs> oh yeah, yeah of and, course uh, no no everyone needs to, yeah, you, everyone everyone needs to <laughs> have a bit of a bit of berry in their this life. man has done so <laughs> much for the car scene Howard. Oh, we have to give him the freedom of the city check out, uh, check it out on youtube it's well, it a was, five and yeah. interview in limerick um it was it, it horrendous <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but the thing was that back then that oh it's so i think i i just I had just returned, for, I think, from, from either that, the shows that we played together in the Netherlands. It was after the ne Netherlands show, yeah. It wasn't long yeah. after that, actually. Yeah. No, but that, that we were... Oh, okay. Then, then it could be that we got back from the, from the last... Tour, of the second tour. Um, but that I was back, and then we talked about varieties of English, like, like pron different pronunciations and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, Irish, Irish, oh. And especially, you know, Cork English. <laughs> How does that sound, sir? Well... <laughs> <laughs> And then you got Barry, and you're like, okay, this is the most extreme variety. Is that Barry Derland? Barry oh, Derland, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was in his, in his prime. Oh, man. <laughs> We've been drinking all morning. 
<laughs> Before he turned vegan, yeah. I think yeah. that's mentioned in the in the interview as well. <laughs> <laughs> they actually had a showing of that. Um, they, it was part of a series. I forget the name of the company, but they did a, a series of different bands who were traveling through Limerick at oh, the yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> and they had a, they had a viewing, a, a show in Dolan's, I think it was. And uh, I think there was like 12 minutes of outtakes of just Barry. <laughs> just... <laughs> Saying it's the most inappropriate things to the wrong people and just oh, after so that second tour, we used to had had to fly back early because of that's right. Yeah, I remember bringing it to the train station. And we now. went to a show with with um, I burn, of course. Who can, <laughs> um, but also, oh no, 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 that's the name. It was an amazing band. Still is, I think. Oh, Elankus. Yeah, Lancus, Lancus, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, fuck. They were uh, top of the heap back then. They were so good. Fuck so sake. Good. Uh, but the, um, but uh, I, I started to talk to, to Barry like properly. So for an hour, I, I, I could sit and hear him spin the yarns and show him. He showed me his tattoos. And his tattoo, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, at that time, this is something I will tell my kids at a certain age. <laughs> And I will. Yeah, a local legend. <laughs> to put it mildly. Goodies back. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get involved in Roadburn, Johan? Um, well, I mean, I think it's a good question anyways, but I do think that one of the reasons is that because of what I said, that DBA's, uh, DBA's that we organize the shows there, that um, loads of the bands that toured Roadburn around that time we, we would mail uh, them as well as Walter asking, okay. hey, we want to do a show as well with them. Is that allowed or can we, can't we? Hmm. Um, and we had great, like, great contact with, with uh, Walter anyways then. Um, and then the first time we played with, with, yeah, it was the first time we played with uh, Tazada Hood. It was, it was around about the self-release. Uh, um, and then we, we, we hang out. We, we hung out. That, that was really it. And then the, day, the year after, he, he asked me, um, to to join him and because because there's a couple of guys booking that of course a couple of people I should say yeah. sorry because because Becky's part of that as well of course uh, a couple of people booking that and he asked me okay could you, do you have a couple of bands that I should check out as well <clears throat> pardon me and then that you know that that's that was what I did since then uh, every now and then I I would send him a uh, couple of bands or something I was like this is something that you should check and like the thing is of course for him it's he's got eight million friends who will all send him 5 million YouTube links every day. So it's, 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 I was lucky that a couple of the things that I could send him, he, he, he wanted to book and he loved that. And then um, for, for Mastom, so what was uh, the, the big thing part, uh, a year ago now, uh, that was really, that, that was awesome. Okay, so we, we've done something, we've done these, these um, showcases now for the Icelandic scene. But we think that the Dutch scene is is big enough for this now as well. So would you would you like to do a commission piece uh, as well? And I was like, the thing is, random at the time I was thinking, okay, I should I should do less because I'm I'm so busy. <laughs> I should probably dial it down a bit. But what I said was yes, and <laughs> you know that was that. Um, so I had a, a list of twenty eight people that I wanted to play with, <laughs> and then I was told I shouldn't. But then I did, and no, I did. Uh, but I was, I was, I mean, I'm still very honored that he asked me, that they asked me and that I was allowed to do that because I'm a horrible planner. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. So I, I, I would say on the other side of it, the amount of bands that you listen to and I'd say, yeah. I don't know how you find the time to do that, but um, it's incredible. That's also because I'm a teacher really. And um, I've been, I've been, I mean, we've all been into music since we were, you know, we yeah. laugh, of course. Um, yeah. I can't keep up with it now, being truthful. Yeah. It's just not possible. I think you I, can, I though, you, and I yeah. think you will honourably <laughs> do your best through thick and thin. To the, and that's the difference, you see. I just go, no, nah, I can't. I just, no, it's just not possible. I, I, I spend it an hour and 45 minutes, well, in total, approximately three hours a day, uh, three and a half hours a day in public transportation. Ah. So there you go. That helps to, to listen as well. Yeah, but that's it. So I've got like I've got a couple of friends who I whom I would trust with my life, but specifically with the music choices. Also because oftentimes they send me something and then go, but you shouldn't listen to this because you think it's crap. And then I listen to to it for five seconds and go, yeah, crap. Mm. <laughs> um, and and there's there's a couple of um, uh, blog spots that I follow still. Um, and then Bandcamp nowadays is a big thing as well. I would argue that that you've got these 
people you can follow, friends you can follow, and if you say, hey, he's buying it, she's buying it, she's buying it, they're buying it. Yeah. Okay, I will listen to it then, and, and who knows what will happen. It is difficult, but I'm, I'm lucky that I've been around for a long time, or at least I've been around for a long time and I've organized loads of shows so that you, you, you've got a network of people who are either playing in awesome bands or booking awesome bands. And you can trust them. When you see that they're enthusiastic about something, but it's mad. It's, it's you have these kind of streams where, like I suppose, different points of contact. So, for example, I'll see what Yon is tweeting about in terms of a band, and I'm straight in there to see what's going on. <laughs> and the funniest thing happened, like when did it? What well, when Monolith was being booked? Um, we were looking at bands who had been on the Roadburn bill on the lower stages just to see was around when we could nip and take over. Mm. And uh, Con sent me a message. <laughs> I think it was the following day or something with a, a link to Black Decades. <laughs> <laughs> which is a band that Johan sings in ah. and, <laughs> and he just <laughs> straight away he was like yeah he fucking he gave him the story he's like Thursday the word get, get them over for fuck's sake come on let's do it mm-hmm. and it's amazing how these things come full circle you're kind of going through different portals to get good music and at some point everybody <laughs> meets up in the middle but, uh, yeah we, we were looking to cherry pick some of the, the Roadburn Roadburn um, lower stages just to see who was anyone worth taking over and Black Decades straight away straight away was the was Khan's first choice and uh, it's probably through myself that I convinced him to put Thursday the Horde instead <laughs> so hopefully Black Decades next time <laughs> apologies to Black we will Decades. be there <laughs> we'll get our, our our van and we'll drive <laughs> <laughs> but for right I, I have never been to Roadburn so uh both of you sell it to me. And there's plenty Jesus that haven't Christ. been here, so sell it to me. Why Why is it so special? It's like, it's like DMT, Richie. You can't really sell it. You've got, you got to try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, so we were talking about, about the key in Cork, right? Yeah. And, and do you remember, sh- there must have been shows where it was packed and everyone was at, you know, just, just drunk enough or, or stoned enough to be completely awesome and a band would be playing mm-hmm. just go if I die now yeah. I am okay with this yes and well, it's a weekend that, that full of those days. moments yeah, it's just, but that's it really like, like yeah. okay. and it's, it's just full it's, of those. you're just sitting there and next thing some, you hear you hear the thing and you go look at it and you're like <laughs> fuck me I, I'd never heard of the body I've, to my shame I had never come across the body before and walked in in Roadburn and my face was just blown to the back of the room and ever since it's just one of my top three bands at the moment you know Fuck okay so you're doing a shit job trying to <laughs> sell it so far right okay no no what is this the is structure my... is it indoor outdoor <laughs> venues yes. what is it and then yes. you can talk about your bands then no no this is this is for me this is the best this is and the what about best accommodation? <laughs> I, I played there with Black Decades because you know um, and, and what happens, and I'm not proud of that, but what happens after I've played Roburn, I start to drink because you're full of emotions and elations and, and you don't have to do anything anymore. So like, uh, and what I tend to do, and, and people let me pass by, is that I walk onto stage at times. Just, just I go on around the back and go, hey, and people go, hey, and you see them all <laughs> around. Like, I'm not the only one who could do that. And um, who was it? Uh, oh, it was uh, Cult of Luna was playing with Julie Mariner. And that's that, that a sickness record. Like, like it is amazing. And I was mm. sitting with with a can on stage, just just going, "Oh man, this is the best thing ever." And I felt a hand on my shoulder, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, fair, fair, you know, fair play." Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. And and someone whispered in my ear, "Your knees," because I was wearing shorts. Your knees are so white that the lights are reflecting off of them. Could you go back a bit? <laughs> and that, I was like, "Oh, oh yeah, sure, sure." The can, no one more worried. And it's, this is this is Roadburn. This is fucking Roadburn. Oh, it's amazing, man. I remember going to the bar and you get these tokens and you have to give the tokens at the bar and the tokens are, are deceiving because they cost four euros, but they look like a two euro. So you end up spending a lot of money. But I, I went to the bar and the barman was just like, what are you doing? And I said, what, what do you mean? Like, because there's an off license across the road. You can get 20 beers for a tenner. Don't be wasting your money on these tokens. Just go get your beers, put them into the glass and walk in. No one's going to say a word. No. <laughs> this is like, yeah. Jesus. Really? Yeah. 
Oh, it's, it's it's impossible to articulate. It really is. It's just, yeah, but it, it, they're you, all you indoor venues. Yeah. Yeah. You, you tend yeah. to have like yeah. four four indoor five indoor venues. Um, in the t- in the city. Very, it's in the city. Yeah, very yeah. very close proximity. It'd be a bit yeah, like yeah, where yeah. where um, Cypress Avenue is if you cordon off all that street there, oh, and you had five or six venues and just, right. just things going on. It's really cool. Yeah, and it's it's. I mean, like like three of them are big, and and the, the other three are and smallish mm. uh, but it's like I, I've seen bands play for, for 50 people and it was it was packed and it was the best show ever and I've seen bands play for 3,000 3, people and it was okay yeah. but what happens every single time is that you, you just fucking follow people what you said just now that you've never seen the money I've had Oranzi Pazuzi, because we booked them as well in Utrecht, but that was after I'd seen them at that. And, and mm. I was like, psychedelic, black metal, and I don't like psychedelic, I fuck it. And, and then so a couple of friends of mine were like, God, just fucking follow me. Like, oh, man, yeah, fine. And then I stood there <laughs> and said, like, oh, but this is, oh, but this is, this is really, really, really good. And then to, to, you know, like 20 minutes later, you're dancing there going, this is my, this is my, my favorite band. And, and every single person you'll speak to there has this kind of experience that you, you, mm. yeah, it, someone, you see a band which you would never ever in, in your life would have chosen to see. Yeah. But you know, there's six mm. playing now. Yeah. You got to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Because like kind of as a, as, no, I'm not really a traditional heavy metal follower as such, like, cause I like my hardcore, like I like loads of shit anyway, but like, I enjoy more so going to bands that I don't know fuck all about, but it's it's usually outdoor festivals that we go to. Um, mm. We'd we'd never, yeah, Monolith probably be be the best <laughs> version of that, you know. Mm. Um, but kind of so if you if you get a weekend ticket for Roadburn, because I still have to get my head around it, right? You have to get a weekend ticket for you you free access to all those bands in those venues, but some of those venues you're queuing are you actually is there a queuing system or can you just yeah. stroll in and yeah, that's that is the one downside the smaller venues do tend to pack out pretty quick so if you want to get in and see those guys you gotta you gotta make a plan really to get there before the queue starts but it's so okay. much so work going inside it happened actually the last time i was there when we went to see tours of door and uh, we we sat outside a little bit too long <laughs> and by the time we went inside we were really squeezed up at the back you know yeah but uh, it, yeah, it's part of it. It really yeah, is. But, and, and everyone is in that, that. But the line keeps on moving. It Just, keeps moving, yeah. It's not a frustrating line at all. And you meet so many people in yeah, that line yeah. and fuck it. Oh yeah, yeah well, that's, that's, the, that's so cool. And when you get into the venue then, do you get your beers in there or are you bringing your beers into the venue? All this stuff like. now. Either or, it's just the streets. You can bring your beer wherever the fuck you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't try, t- yeah, bring cans, not bottles. That's what I would yeah, add. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, 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 obviously, yeah. yeah. No, but uh, as I would say just now, and that's literally anyone, because I, I remember getting a beer, again, after I've played, <laughs> I remember getting a beer at a bar somewhere and just walking off with that glass full of beer <laughs> and walking into the, the, into the main venue where I was told, if you have glass, you know, you will, you will be shot on sight. And I just went... <laughs> Hey, and there was a guy standing there going, hey! <laughs> you know, it's overall, and, and I, but I would argue that's any metal festival anywhere. People are good. Like, like people are understanding, are, are welcoming, and there's a general sense of, you know, we're all in this together. I, I've been there now, I don't know, I've been there 10, 12 times now, say. Uh, and there's never been a, as far as I can tell, there's never been a fight, as in that perhaps there's been a bit of a scuffle at, at six o'clock in the morning when the bars closed down, you know, stuff like that. But, but that <laughs> had nothing to do with Roadburn per se. But even then, you get people going, hey, guys, come on, man, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah. best it's strange, people in the It's a in, strange in the best experience. Series. It really is. It's, it's so cool, yeah. but it's, it, it is strange. It's a hard one to put a finger on it. But it's just, a, I guess... Just see the Limerick, Richie, you know yourself, if you bait out from hugging people, like, yeah. <laughs> walking around the place. And it's a bit like that, except oh, with an okay. accent. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I, 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 m- some of my best rober memories are standing outside of the main deck. Yeah, to people for sure, yeah. Dance. Same, I mean. <laughs> you go, yeah. okay, what time are they? Oh, oh, okay. Another beer? Yeah, yeah, another beer. 
<laughs> is there a, a certain kind of um, band that won't get in there? Like we'll say, for example, the, a, a trash metal band won't get in there. It, what, what is kind of the flavor of Roadburn? They, they've changed more and more the past couple of years, I'd say, mm. which is also why we could play because uh, yeah. Black Hole wasn't, wasn't going to play there like okay. years ago. A trash metal could, band could play. What, what's most important for Walter, in you know, t- speaking on behalf of Walter, perhaps shouldn't, but the thing is that he must love it. That's that's the thing that's most important. If he loves the music, you'll play there. Okay. Um, and then, as I said, there are other bookers there who will also contribute, of course, and so. Mm. But if Walter loves you, you play. And so you have, you have. I mean, looking at uh, what you, Dave Eugene Edwards, the uh, 16 horsepower. Mm. You have a guy with a banjo there playing songs yeah. about his um, orthodox Christian beliefs. But yeah. it's dark and we love it. So fine. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You have Diamanda Galas as well. Diamanda Galas, yeah. I was at that show. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It was just that. Uh, Fuck's sake. Yeah, no, it's horrible. Like that's one, in the best way possible. Is fucking unreal. But that's it. And that's really because, also because Robert now gives that kind of a project. You will get people if you play Rob Room. People will watch you. Full stop. There, there's no yeah. denying that, and and um, that also means that everyone wants to play, everyone wants to play there, mm. um, and 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 rightfully so. I mean, I, we've been lucky. I've been lucky to play to to play there a couple of times now. The trip to can't play there, no. Yeah, yeah. They they played. They had the uh, the first the orchestra. Week. Was it no? They played with the orchestra. Yeah. Yeah, that's they, that's they, what got my attention straight away. I mean, fuck me. Imagine but seeing it. that. I, yes, imagine seeing that. I have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> no, you but, can but express that, them there, Johan. There's no problem. No one would judge you on this show. No, no, no. <laughs> but the thing is that, but that, what I love I, is I that. I don't think Tom G's got a great reputation in Cork anyway. I think that there's. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, take it was the, he signed my book, Howard, and that's it was all the last, that uh, matters. The last he signed gig my in, book. Uh, the Krushkeen was, was Trip to Con, I think, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, or the Five Alive singer, picked him up from the airport. And uh, yeah, he's not exactly a fan either, I'd put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> As no, I no, said. But, it, but that's the thing. that He, he got, having, having uh, Tom G. Warrior play with um, one of the, the most prominent Dutch classical orchestras. Correct. As a, hey, we should do this. And then everyone goes... Yeah, you know that's what that's what Walter that's what Roburn does as well. Uh, a couple of years back, you had I know lost the name, but you had you had Converge playing together with Chelsea Wolf and guys from oh King. the Blood Moon thing that was Blood fucking, Moon, that, that was, that, it, was yeah. amazing. The guys from Neurosis jumped in for a couple of songs. Yeah, true. Yeah, no, but oh man, it was just that. one of the most intense performances I've seen when uh, Steve Till came up and did that uh, Bloom yeah. vocal. Yeah, yeah, you could feel you could feel the you know the primitive bone rattling inside your chest like it's like Jesus Christ. But that's Christ. it, like like converge. I I I I used to I used to be a centaur, but like that that was a band that I loved to bits. And then mm. Jane Doe, which mm. wasn't as good as the record Jane Doe for me at least, and I was like, a bit disappointed. But then I saw that show, and I was like, this is what Robert does. They put they elevate musicians in that sense as yeah. well. Yeah. They make musicians go the extra mile. Um, and that's what happened to, to I mean, with Maestro, with that, that the thing we, we did, uh, that was the same. Like, we did something we would have never, ever done. And only because Walter and, and, and Brent and, and Becky and, and everyone there said, hey, do you want to? And everyone was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and there we go. And then, then suddenly you, you've got like 70 minutes of, of, of Dutch black metal, which is new and awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, new songs. What's happening? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, mastering is on its way. Okay. We've got a new record coming now. Um, still, I think we would still release it on the title in one of these. I am your enemy, and it's where we, with self, we lo- really look at the self as in what what is the self and how does that work. We now move one step beyond and go into okay. But the, in, in which structures is this self and caught? And then we, we have songs about, uh, essentially about teaching as well, about scenario building, about uh, cre- the creation of worlds. How do you create a world in which a student wants to uh, participate and stuff like that? So it's, Explore. it has a book list and everything, but it's, um, no, we, we, 
Yeah, no, I think I can say that now. Um, in in because last year was fucking horrible for most of us in 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 loads of ways. And in the run up to uh, Maastricht, in the run up to playing Rockburn, I was thinking about quitting the band. And when when I was talking about that, uh, suddenly our drummer said the same. Like I'm thinking about quitting the band, and I was happy about that because that meant that you know we can we could yeah. all can you know discuss this and then move on. And then we sat together and we t- literally we talked about feelings for the first time in fucking twelve years of being in a band. And <laughs> metal band at that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was ridiculous and was stupid. But that's I mean also because of the situation we were in and literally also the situation I was in because I was I was avoiding contact and stuff like that. But and ever since we've been writing new songs and and and, and you know there's no holds barred. So we we've got the the songs now for the new record. And we've got two other songs which are in development, and we've got one song which actually finished, which we perhaps should have recorded for the full length. But you know, we'll see where that goes. So suddenly things are happening again, good. and it's it's so good. But it's um, yeah, it took a while. It took- are you have you got a certain um, producer in mind? Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, uh, we, well, we. we Recorded and mixed pretty much everything ourselves, besides the drums, who were done by Wessel in uh, Katakomba. He's, he's a drummer for eight million other Dutch metal bands. He's a drummer for Luster as well. If you I don't know if you know Luster, if you don't, mm. know, you should listen to them because they're the guys with the masks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Fucking Jack Shirley is doing the the mastering now. Um, sorry, who? Was also that. Hmm? who? Oh, sorry, Jack Shirley. He's uh, okay. To be the guitar player in Comadre, and he's done loads of things for Death Heaven and for Bustonage and for like we were looking for someone who could understand why we would play a screamo breakdown in a blast beat st- a piece and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it was, I mean, we took we, we had a list, we we actually just like we, we mailed with Steve Albini going. So would you do this? And he was like, "Yeah, if you pay me." And he's like, yeah, "I don't know if that's the approach." <laughs> I mean, you know, it did the exact same thing for the the Magnapina. <laughs> sent Steve Albini a, a message, and exact same thing. Yeah, if you fucking pay me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't How that expensive actually. It no, no, we have the same. Like it's it's doable. <laughs> it's doable, but it's like four days with a lunatic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it. And, and then we were like, okay, but who, I mean, who would you want to sound like? And so we had a couple of records and then we suddenly found out like, oh, Jack, Jack, sure. Oh, oh, mm. oh. So, and, e- and Jack Shirley, emailing Jack Shirley, giving him our demos. And he was like, yeah, I would love to do this. Like, oh, okay, fine. Good. And that's great news then. So <laughs> I, know, I was supposed to share this, but now you know. <laughs> <laughs> so 2021. Yeah, realistically. I mean, we, we, we were really working towards the end of 2020. Uh, but then, you know, the mm. both caught up on us. And, and so it's uh, start 2021. Yeah. Everything should be done at November and then sent to the labels and then see what happens. Yeah. Happy with that, Howard? Oh, I can't wait. Jesus. Yeah. You know, good things come to those away and all that. <laughs> I can't wait till the beginning of the next year. <laughs> and the faster it fucking comes, the better. <laughs> For many it's, reasons, including yeah, no. the Thursday of the Horde new album. <laughs> One of the main reasons I love 2021 <laughs> is... We can do this. You know, it's the motivating factor. We're going to get through this winter of fucking discontent Definitely. and yes. listen to fucking Thursday the Horde when we're done. Um, I just <laughs> want to sit the there on your couch. I want to sit there on your couch again with your yeah. collection of whiskeys and <laughs> make, fun of, yeah, make fun of Yost while he's trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> It's the simple things in life, lads. We don't ask too much. Sure, we don't. We don't ask too much. For fuck's sake. Just give us back live gigs and get some decent music out. And I, it will happy happen. Days, I'm optimistic. Man. I really am. Look, we're, we're going to get through it all. It's just a, a fucking weird time in history. And, uh, Have you had like, like socially distant shows in, in Ireland? We've had um, we've done a few stream them. shows and things. Um, and we're doing another one uh, soon enough, I think, actually, uh, okay. in, in, in the all. But it's with no audience. So it really is no. just streaming. Ah. I, I, yeah, the, the pubs are still closed here, you know. So you've got a, yeah. a few, a few yeah. restaurant bars open. But in yeah, terms yeah, of like, yeah. music and being attended, it's, it's really, really far off. And it's a real pity because the industry was on its knees anyway. And we just don't know what we're looking at in 2021. Are we going to have venues accepting bands anymore? Is the competition for those gigs going to be too great for a lot of bands yeah, yeah, to keep yeah. going? 
you know, um, yeah, it's, incredibly, it's incredibly frustrating considering um, mm. Ireland and the metal scene at the moment is the best it's ever been. And that's the shame in it because it really yeah. is on an upward trajectory. And, you know, we plans for Monolith this year. We had the men were over for a show last week, which, you know, we couldn't go ahead with. And, yeah, it's, it's tough to deal with. But, look, health is a priority. We know that. We're, yeah, no, no, it's clear. clear we're it's on board clear. with it as well, as much as we hate it, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. I, I would hate to see the likes of Fred Zeppelins and, and things of that go under. I mean... They've been such Jeez. a mainstay. They've been such a mainstay well. for for so long, and to any bar that hasn't been open for six months, no. who the fuck do you come back from it? It's very mm. hard to see. So I don't know how that's going to look next year. Mm. I really yeah. hope that we have, you know, these venues to see the likes of God alone and you know Red Sun Alert come through, and all these bands that are bubbling yeah. beneath, beneath the surface at the moment. Yeah, it's it's just, it really does feel that we are on the, the verge of the likes of God alone just breaking through a little barrier and going up the next level but like and, just, and you and you played up. Cypress Avenue you, that new yeah. venue in Cork like how good is yeah. that it's amazing. but that's the thing that we, we played a similar venue a couple of months ago a couple of weeks ago actually where uh, there was a maximum of 55 people uh, who could socially distance you know sit there and it was it was weird but it was so fucking good to play <laughs> and, to, and, and the thing is that I mean you know the people there as well they they Everyone was kind of going, yeah, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. checking themselves. Yeah, yeah, but it was. I mean, it was weird. But it's. I would. I. I would hope at least that, that these kinds of venues where you could have, I don't know, twenty, thirty people sitting there going, just going. Ah. Mm. Did you notice um, for yourself, Johan, because just knowing from the, the the gigs I've seen you play, I mean, you really are an in-your-face audience band. I mean. Yeah. You're down there in people's faces, around people, surrounding <laughs> them. <laughs> Who's talking? <laughs> but it does. It brings an intensity to your show, particularly yeah. reused. It's just his, his delivery and the way that he presents yeah. himself and goes about things. That must have been really difficult to, to translate into a, a big venue with 55 people. How did how yeah. did he get that intensity to you know push that it thing was, over the edge? We, we decided to play an all new song set. So literally we played the new record and the new song that I was talking about that we should have recorded mm. but didn't. Um, so that, that brought another like, like, like uh, extra layer of intensity to it. And, and essentially it was difficult. And especially for Houston because he, you saw him like pacing, pacing, pacing. <laughs> yeah. I just want to grab someone and, and scream in their faces, but I'm, I'm not allowed. Um, and it was fun because a couple of people literally w walked up to us afterwards and, and said something along the lines of, I wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure whether or not he would jump and it was so scary. Like, ah, good. But also a couple of people, like, he, he looked like a caged animal. I, w I, I was feeling sad for him. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that was literally. I was <laughs> <laughs> he deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> Finally, someone's caging him. No, but it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> a couple of like like two months back, I was in. We we were interviewed. I was interviewed for a um, uh, uh, never mind the hype, an amazing site, but uh, like about local metal bands and local bands, anyways. Uh, and and uh, the reporter asked me like, do you do you see yourself playing one of these shows? And I was like, no, we are an in your face band. You know, we we need this. And I think two days after, uh, Brent emailed me like. Hey, would you like to play the show? Like, yes. Like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. No, we are we are playing now. <laughs> I have standards, but I also really, 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 really want to play. <laughs> so, yeah, hmm. needs more. I mean, there's a couple of shows coming up in the next couple of months now uh, in the Netherlands. At least we we are now more and more because uh, again, DBs are, are combining. Like you, you can you can have 25 people or 30 people sitting there. They're also live streaming it, and then they they sell a, a one yeah. two euro ticket, so you can stream it, stream shows as well. And I think that 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 really, I mean, it's at least it's something, you know. Uh, yeah. Trying to make make do. Um, I'm so happy about that. Look and hard as as a frontman, you're going to be fall fall into the same thing. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to be yeah. really conscious of it as well, because you know, like you know, it is a temptation it's, 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 for you. It's, it's my just first thought. The, is just yeah, exactly. Of course it is, and, and it's the first thought, you know, and it that, that, and that's something I don't know how to to um, control. Just deal with it as it comes in, you know. You just you just see what happens like that. Yeah. I can I I can uh, foresee a lot of pacing around and things like this. But having said that, when we did when we did the Magna Pena stream up in um, 
in Dolan's. Mm. Um, there certainly was a different, uh, different energy, a different uh, layer of intensity, I guess, that you can't account for. I suppose you're more conscious of it when there's not a crowd there because you're... Mm. It's the trade-off and, is being grateful to play. That's the yeah, trade-off. It is, and, and you know that passion comes out through that, I think, more than anything yeah. else. But I'm really looking forward to fucking playing a gig in Fred's again in front of 40 people, 50 people in that small room yeah. and just, you know, mm. going insane yeah. it's, it's <laughs> and crucially and being armed with new material as well that we like, well this is it this is it and that's the that's the whole thing that's it. For, and then for we're, the we're after it. just back from practice actually richie before we started the podcast and that's that's what we were at that's why my voice is a little husky but um we are we're, we're we're really really closing in on that last few minutes of uh music and it's a shame that we got locked down when we did but it's 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 Changed what we would have released a great deal, I think. Whoa, okay, and that's I, it's, interesting. It's, it's exciting. The stuff, the stuff that we're coming up with is pretty exciting. I cannot wait to get it out. So that's sustaining me at the moment. Is that kind of uh, you know, you re- satisfaction? You released and the, uh, the 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 Barthelon record is now on vinyl as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's mm. it's um, recycled granulate. So every every disc is a different color kind of thing. Uh, Three hundred oh, of them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so Paranoid Beast, they're just the local crowd here. Seriously. Oh. And Mark. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So they're entering the label business. <laughs> Gotta do something. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah. They're great guys. Um, I was talking to Mark during the week about it. But I will leave um, that straight away. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but, uh, I still yeah. can't decide what colour you own. That's that's my biggest problem. Same, <laughs> same. <laughs> So lads, listen, thank you so much, Johan. Absolute dude. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on the show at last, man. I enjoyed myself immensely, man. And for it's fucking fun, sporting and for sporting the God Alone t shirt, man, that's five stars. What a guest, Howard. What a guest. <laughs> the best. The best. Yeah. Thanks, man, for getting him on. I appreciate that, Howard, as well. Johan, thank you for coming aboard. Fantastic to talk to you. As always. No, Thanks, guys. It was, it was let, amazing. Let's meet in 2021 for a few beers. Roadburn. Roadburn 2021. Roadburn 2021. There you go, man. Let's we're, do it. we're playing an illegal show with Desire to Hold a sub kind of I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> See? Okay, you've been listening to Richie. uh, Basement Tour 2021. It's been fun. You've been listening to Richie, Johan, and Howard. Thanks, everybody. 